and we're fighting for a basic right. They say there's apartheid in the state of Israel, and they're right. There's one place in the state of Israel where Jewish people are not allowed to enter on certain days of the week, and certain times, and certain hours. I'm not saying to throw anybody off the mountain. But why can't I pray there too? All of this conversation of we don't know, we don't know, there's no reason to worry, according to Halakha. Do you remember 2017? I came to the Kotel and I saw about 40,000 Jews there, sitting on the floor and crying. Shana b'shana. Morning. About what? When will we be able to go up to Harabai to build a Ben Mikdash? You're sitting on the floor of the Kotel, for God's sake. What is the Kotel in Jewish thought? Nothing. Nothing. What is the Kotel? The Kotel is the outer wall of, not the Ben Mikdash. We have the mountain, Harabai, right? This mountain, our rabbis hollowed it out by building a wall around it retaining wall, and then we built a plaza on top, and on top of that was a bit of that. So what is the Kotel? All of those teachings that Chachamim say that the Shekhinah didn't leave the western wall of the Bet Mikdash. the western wall of the Bet Mikdash is not the western wall of the Temple Mount. But I'm not going to take away everybody's Kotel. The Kotel for sure is the place the Jewish people came to pray, because it's the closest place the non-Jews, they allowed us to enter, because we weren't allowed to go to the Temple Mount. Right outside of the gates of the Temple Mount is a police station. It's called the Mahkamah. This place was once a court of Sharia law. We have records there of Jews being executed for entering the Temple Mount. That's where they killed them. Today it's an Israeli police station. So we are in a self-imposed galut on the floor of the Kotel because we can't go up to pray in the Temple Mount because it's against Israeli law. Why is it against Israeli law? In 1948, we lost the Yerushalayim. In 1967, we finally were victorious. On the radio, how might be Adenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands, Rabbi Goren blows the shofar, blesses Shekhyanu. Not so long afterwards, Moshe Dayan was a general. So I'm not an army general, so I can't appreciate his uh, bravery at war. I can appreciate all that he didn't do for the Jewish people. He gave the Temple Mount to the Waqf. Who is the Waqf? It's a Jordanian Muslim authority on the Temple Mount. So it's a foreign entity. The Waqf is the same one who met with Adolf Hitler, Yemachshem of Zichol. So what happens? We give the keys to the Temple Mount to them, and then ban ourselves from the mountain. And what, it, what, can, what can only be the craziest thing one can do, but here you have rabbis who don't want Harabait. You have the Muslims that don't want us in Harabait. You have the Israeli police who are terrified of World War III breaking out in Harabait. And so who wants Harabait? Clearly everybody at the Kotel, Right? They're all crying about it. And I came back here and I said, Bezat Hashem, when I can, I'm not going to be from those people anymore. This year, I went up to Halavite with the help of a wonderful organization I'll share with you later that's busy advocating for Jews going to Halavite. They've advocated so well that you're talking about a couple years already now where there are minyanim every morning on Halavite. I prayed Shacharit seven times, six times on Halavite. Without a talit and tefillin, because that's a federal offense. It's illegal for Jews to wear talit and tefillin in Harabait. Now, of course, all hell breaks loose. How dare you go to Harabait? How could it be that a Jewish person goes to Harabait? How could it be that Jewish... Let me explain. Open up the Mishnah in Masechet Kelim that talks about Eser Kedushotein. There are ten levels of holiness in the world. Israel is holier than the rest of the world. Yerushalayim is holier than Israel. The Temple Mount is holier... Inside of the Temple Mount, there are different levels. There are places on the Temple Mount that a Tamim mit that a person who has touched a dead body like you and I without a paraduma, without a red heifer, are not allowed to go. That's true. But there are places where we are allowed to go in the Temple Mount. That's an explicit Mishnah. The Rambam rules that way. There is no argument. It's a very, it's a very explicit Mishnah. What do we have? We don't know. We don't know where the Bet Mikdash stood, so we don't know where the places are that we can go, so we don't know, and we don't know, and we don't know. You have stories throughout the ages of Chachamim going to Arabite. The Rambam seems to have gone to Harabait. They made a festival out of that day. They want to say he didn't go to Harabait. He went to a very big synagogue in Jerusalem. I'm sure that's exactly the reason why the Rambam made a festival for the time that he went to the big synagogue in Jerusalem. He never saw in his life a big synagogue before. Not in Egypt, and not in Syria, and not anywhere where he was. He never saw a big synagogue. I'm being sarcastic, of course. The Radbaz is writing exactly where Jews go and don't go 
But after 1967, Rabbi Shlomo Goren made it his mission where exactly Jews can go according to all the opinions. These are contemporary books that whose whole purpose is to chart out Halabites, to tell you where Jews can go and cannot go, meaning without a red heifer. If I can show you here. You have the Temple Mount right here. Yes, the Kotel is right there. That's the Kotel. So this little bit is the Kotel. This entire plaza is the Temple Mount. If you can fit 16,000 people in the Kotel Plaza, you could fit 20 times that on the Temple Mount itself. The last Muslim holiday that was there, there were a quarter of a million people there. They all fit. Now where can't you go? I mean, that's not the Ben Mikdash was right here. This red area is the red area where you shouldn't enter. So what do we do? We come up here and we walk all of this and at a certain point we pray. It's the first time in 2,000 years Jews are praying in Halabayit. I wash the hands of a Kohen. A Kohen. On Halabayit. For the first time in my family, for the first time in my family's history, 2,000 years. And we're fighting for a basic right. They say there's apartheid in the state of Israel. They're right. There's one place in the state of Israel where Jewish people are not allowed to enter on certain days of the week and certain times and certain hours. And if they go, it's only with a police escort. And if it's with a police, freedom of religion, there's no sidurim, and there's no talitot, there's no tefillin. I'm not saying to throw anybody off the mountain. But why can't I pray there too? In which, in which democratic country do you have places where people of a certain religion cannot enter? And that's enforced by the police. So these books are intended to show exactly where people can go and have a bite and where they can't. All of this conversation of we don't know, we don't know, there's no reason to worry, according to halakha. By the way, even when you go there, they hand out a map to you. These are not the police, the halakhic organizations there. They'll show you exactly where you can go, what you can go. They say there are no Jewish sites over there because, of course, there never was a temple. There's some 22 or 23 things in broad daylight. You see them from the temple, from the Bet Mikdash. Like that marble stone that on the floor that doesn't belong from, to this era, belongs to that of the Ben Mikdash. Like pieces of pottery that you can see everywhere. You can see the wood that Hiram, you remember the, the cedars of Lebanon, are there. They've been carbon dated. You can see them with your eyes. They're sitting out there to rot in the sun and in the rain, covered with a few blankets. Amisal has to wake up a little bit and talk more about these types of things.